I remember we were at an event and I don't know what the event was, but we, it was kind of towards the end of the night. We'd, we'd had a few drinks and I remember you telling me about this new opportunity oh, um, because there was, there was some work going into preparing for this. There's a bit of a journey. Yeah. You didn't just sort of open the clubs. And I remember you telling me, you know, this vision of, look, this is what we're going to do and they're going to be like this and you're going to do things very, very differently. And I, I have many conversations as, as I'm sure you do of people sort of talking about what they're going to do and how great it's going to be. But yeah. you know, there, there's only a few people I've met. I could probably count them on one hand that have actually gone and done that. And as I was researching the podcast, I went and I was on social media and online and looking at some of the clubs that I'd hoped to see one day. And you, you actually delivered exactly. And I remember we were both standing there sort of, I just probably somewhere in Birmingham or wherever, I can't remember, but it, or it might even be London, but I, I just remember that conversation very, very clearly. And, and, you know, I was quite excited about the vision and, and, and you've gone on to do it. Now, I suppose bringing that to today, you're, you're, you're still kind of around this 1999, no contract, amazing equipment from what I can see. And, and I suppose, you know, jumping forward almost a decade, is it still possible to achieve that? Because I, I guess in this post-pandemic world, um, you know, the equipment costs are, are going up for, for everybody. The, the, so, you know, a big part of what you do is, is equipment and, and the building materials and everything that, that goes into constructing those is, is going up quite significantly. Staff are a lot more difficult to get hold of and, and, and the cost of that is rising. So do, do you feel that you're able to sort of maintain that positioning or do you think that because of some of these uncontrollable changes in in the world that that you may have to rethink that value proposition um i don't think i get to decide that unfortunately i think that you know we 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 tweak the price here and there um but it's it fundamentally comes down to you know price elasticity it, that that dictates the pricing um what we know is you know there are two there are two really key important numbers when you're looking at selling gym memberships and that's how many people are paying you and how much are they paying and, and and it's simple as that and and ideally in a great business you get both you get you get big member numbers on a big yield but what you've always got to make sure that you do is you get a balance that, that ensures that the volumes are still there i think i think if i were to ask it is is the gym business is the gyms that we have are the gyms that we have worth more than we charge of course they are of course they are i mean i mean I was chatting to a friend last weekend and, and you, I think you struggle to, to get any parallel with anything else that, that carries the same value of, as a quality gym membership when you look at it. You know, it's, this is, you know, for, for some people, this is a Starbucks lunch for two people, a sandwich and a coffee, and it's the price of a, of a, of a monthly membership. So, so the value, the, the value parallel doesn't really sit there, but, but competition and the demographic that you're pulling from uh, and all those other factors are the reason why we charge what we charge because we, we believe that the price point that we have will give us the best returns we, we've started to tweak the price in certain locations we've just built our first organic j gyms in the south of england we, we're very strong in the north and the middle of scotland um we have a few sites already in the south but they're, they're sites that we acquired through the exercise for less uh, business this is the first one and, and, and the price is slightly slightly higher and you know the, the model is slightly smaller the price is slightly higher but we've got a phenomenal demand and it's what's really encouraging is, is that it's in a location that there isn't another jd gyms for probably 60 or 70 miles so what it still proves to me is that the product is fresh enough that when we go into the right locations that it that, it, that it's still really relevant and, and really interestingly it's when i look at the cameo profiling of the people in the area it, it's pulling from a much more affluent demographic, which again, you know, if you look at a typical JD Gyms member and you had a kind of one to 10 scale of, of affluent to, to, to not so affluent, you know, we are bottom half typically, but that becomes quite self-fulfilling when you build gyms in areas that, that that's got a huge prevalence of that, of that type of consumer. So, so as we start to expand now into new territories, what's really encouraging is that we the product is still relevant regardless of, of, of kind of which which profile you come from but yeah i, I don't get to set the price matt you know it fundamentally i it, it's it's a tap isn't it i turn the price up 50 percent, and you know i look at how many people are paying it and am i getting the same level of return but but what i will say is that the to, to answer your question a little bit i think is that i think where you started off was that these gyms look incredible i think part of what you're what you're saying there is they're clearly very well invested 
can you still afford to do that and only charge 19.99 my argument to that is you can't afford not to do that because <laughs> because otherwise you'll lose and and when you do that we don't necessarily win on yield but we definitely win on volume because we've, we've created a product that is i suppose it's not for everybody but in the demographic that we target amongst those younger people you know the instagrammable generation that, that sit there and want to you know want to want to be working out on the best equipment with the like-minded people it's the same as the bars that they go to the bars that they frequent and uh, and the people that they hang out with they will they will drive past other low-cost competitors to get to us and we couldn't do that if we weren't creating that product that i told you about in birmingham or london or wherever it was because i genuinely feel as though you know we needed to stand out i i, I wanted to create a place that this generation can have a night out as well as go for a workout and that's what that's what we've done i mean i'm in our head office in wigan here we have a we have a 26 and a half thousand square foot gym in here and i still get really excited to go on training there i'm 48 years of age i reckon you know there's probably no more than three or four guys that'll be in there probably older than me tonight yeah that's the way it is um but it's but but you know for the right people it, it's it, it it's just where they want to be and and if I can't do this business by cutting back on those those principles that I told you about ten years ago. It's it's absolutely what what's got us where we are. And and if anything, we will be we will be accelerating that into the next iteration of JD Gyms. We're already on with that because we've we've unquestionably had a had a few copycats and a and a bit of a me too amongst you know some some mom and pop businesses over here that have that have built one or two and they've they've looked at some things that we've done and they've done it similar, but, but on a, on a lower budget and, and been quite successful. Um, so we need to move it on. So, so, so that's the next stage for us. It's constantly evolving. You know, this, this product here, this one that I'm, that I'm in today, is six years old, if you were to come in today, it looks like it's six months old and it's still current and relevant because it was kind of ahead of its time. Um, but what in the next, you know, in the next batch, I think you'll be, uh, you'll be surprised. 